be it. <laughs> Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to the sounds of suspense. Justice, the noblest creation and the highest ideal of man. The foundation of all religion and the cornerstone of every law. Justice, the birthright of every human being on the face of the earth. Justice, we're brought up to believe in it, to expect it. But what about those people who suddenly discover that for them, there isn't any justice? You just don't go around killing people, Eddie. But there are people who have to be killed. The war is over. It's been over for a long time. No, it isn't. Not for me. Eddie, you're home now. Don't you understand? We can only have justice through the law. Okay. Tell me, will the law give us justice? I just told you, we have no evidence. Okay. No justice from the law. So where and to whom do we go for justice? Tell me. Does that mean there isn't going to be any justice? Our mystery drama... Only the Dead, remember, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Tony Roberts and Mandel Kramer. It is sponsored in part by the Kellogg Company, makers of Kellogg's Special K cereal and new sugar-free diet 7-Up. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Ever since he came home from one of our wars, Eddie Benson has been looking for someone. Those vital years of his life that might have been invested in a career, devoted to a family, have instead been devoured by an all-consuming search as Eddie Benson roamed the length and breadth of America, supporting himself by his nimble and sensitive fingers, playing the piano in grimy saloons, in sophisticated night spots, but always looking, always listening, ever alert for a clue that could lead to his quarry. Well, now, tonight, suddenly the manhunt will come to an end in a cocktail lounge in a northwestern city just a few minutes before midnight. Odd how a search so intense could be climaxed by a discovery so casual how so serious and deadly a crusade can be capped with a laugh. Uh. <laughs> that laugh. Uh. Eddie Benson hasn't heard that laugh in years. That laugh. He would recognize it anywhere. It could only belong to one person. Uh. <laughs> and now, Eddie's fingers slide softly and swiftly over the keyboard and find a melody, a pretty little melody that has a special meaning for certain people, especially for that comfortable-looking man at the corner table, the man with that laugh. <laughs> so I said to her, my dear, if I were to get married again, it would be the triumph of hope over experience. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, Mr. Jackson. That's a good one, all right. Oh, what's the matter, Mr. Jackson? Uh, uh, no matter. Are you okay? You, you've got a funny look on your face all of a sudden. Hey, Millie. Man, you didn't get sick or something. Who's that? Who, who, who's that playing the piano tonight? Oh, some guy filling in for Woody. You know? Uh, no. For a minute, though, I, uh... Well, I thought he may have looked familiar. That's just my imagination. Uh, Millie? What is it, Mr. Jackson? 
Ask him, uh, uh, ask him if he'll, uh... Oh, you got a request, Mr. Jackson? Yeah, I have. Ask him to quit playing that song. You don't like it? It's kind of a catchy tune. Just give him this. Tell him to play something else. Eddie. You've got a request. Uh, request in reverse. A uh, customer says to take this ten bucks and quit playing with your... What's this character's name? Uh, Jackson. R.J. Jackson. I see. R.J. Jackson. Does he, uh, live around here? No. Up on the hill. All kinds of money. Figures. Huh? Uh, it's funny, Millie. How it ends. Where it ends. There were times I thought it would never end. All these years. It kind of took over, you know. It became a way of life. Look, I, I wish I knew what you were talking about. No, you don't, Millie. I think I'll split. You mean walk out? You can't just walk out on How'd the How'd you like to make ten bucks? Well, all depends. You keep the ten spot, and as soon as I'm out of here, you go up to him, good old R.J. Jackson, see, and you say to him, Mother Hennessy's chickens are coming home to roost. <laughs> You're kidding. Say it. You're ten bucks ahead. Yeah, but you can't just quit in the middle of playing. Remember the chickens, Millie. See you around. Yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. The more I get to know musicians. Oh, now, how'd that go? Mother, Hennessy's chickens. Uh, Mr. Jackson. The, uh, Mr. Jackson, the uh, piano player, he wanted me to tell you something. Yeah? <laughs> I bet it's thanks. That's the easiest ten bucks he ever made. Well, what he wanted to tell you was... Yep. Well... Well, he said, uh, let's see, uh, Mother Hennessy's chickens are coming home to roost. <laughs> What's that? I'm sure that's what he said. Mother Hennessy's chickens are coming. No. No. Hey, Mr. Jackson. <coughs> hey, hey, somebody, give me a hand quick. He's fainted. Then you know what time it is? It happens... I got a message for you, Tom. Mother Hennessy's chickens are coming home to roost. What? What did you say? Who is this? Hello? 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 Is Bill Trainer at home? No, but I expect him. Who's calling? Is this his wife? Yes, I'm Liz Trainer. Will you take a message? Well, of course. Tell him. Mother Hennessy's chickens are coming home to roost. Yes. That's all. You're joking. Hello? Hello? Oh, well. Hi, darling. Oh, Bill. You know, you just missed a phone call. Oh, never mind that. What did the doctor say? Oh, things are just fine. He'll be born on schedule. <laughs> you mean you won't take it, girl? <laughs> Darling, I'll take whatever we can get. I can't believe it, honey. After all this time, everything but everything is going our way. Uh, you know, Tom worked out the contract. Oh, Bill. Oh, I'm so happy. Uh, we're going to be rich, honey. We're going to own a business. And we're going to be parents. Uh, <laughs> what were you saying about a phone call? Oh, well, a uh, man just called. Very mysterious. Mm -hmm. He said... To tell you that, uh, let me see, uh, Mother Hennessy's chickens are coming home to roost. He said what? Well, that's what he said. He hung up. Can it mean anything? Oh no, 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 no not nothing at all. Just, just, just forget it. What about dinner? Bill, dinner? Did, did the man say anything else? Bill, you. You're so pale. Honey, believe me, this is really nothing that should concern you. The key is the name Hennessy. Uh, where should we go to dinner? Don, you're trying to distract me. 
Hennessy? We, we don't know any Hennessy. Oh, Connie, I've, I've just been going at a very fast pace. and uh... Hennessy's chickens. Hennessy's chickens. That combination is familiar. Darling, I'm really very hungry. I've got it. Oh, I've got it. Your old army outfit is holding a reunion. What do you know about my old army outfit? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all, except... Except you and Tom Wilson were in it together. You... You were in Korea. You were prisoners, and... You refused to talk about it. Even to me. Why do you say we're having a reunion? Hennessy. What? Last year, when we moved into this house, I... I was putting a lot of your old stuff away. There was an army picture of you and Tom Wilson. Well, you must have been all of 18. And two other young soldiers. In the middle, an older man, a, a sergeant. And underneath it, you had written, Mother Hennessy's chickens. It just clicked in my mind. That, that, that sergeant, uh, that older man. He was all of 26. Well, his name was Hennessy, wasn't it? Yes. And, and, and he looked after all of you like a... Like a mother hen. Yes. And now you're having a reunion. Oh, Bill. What a wonderful person that Sergeant Hennessy. How I want to meet him. No, you can't. Why? He's dead. Oh. Was he killed in the war? In the prison camp. Bill. That music. That, that piano. Hmm? Don't you hear it? It's coming from the living room. Someone's playing the piano. I didn't hear anyone ring the bell. Well, let's go see. No. But someone's in the apartment. Liz, stay here. Bill. I want you to stay in the bedroom. But why? Liz, in all the years we've been married, I never asked you to do anything just because I said so. But I'm asking you now, please. All right, Bill. Just for a while. Remember him? <laughs> Who could ever forget Tom? Well, he's drawing up the contract. He became a lawyer. What about yourself, Eddie? Me? Yeah. A fellow with your talent, the way you could write songs. Like this one, for Hennessy. We all figured we'd hear you doing Broadway musicals, coming up with top hits. Well, I've been too busy. Doing what? Looking for somebody. Looking for an old friend of ours. Bill, I had a phone call. The craziest phone call. Hello, ever. Tommy. Eddie. Hey, Eddie Benson. It could only have been you. Where you been hiding? Tom. Billy. I got the greatest news in the world. I found him. Hmm? I finally found him. You finally found who? The uh, needle in the haystack and on the beach it was such a long time. It was such a long search. Eddie, who did you find? Who do you think? Myers. Myers? R.J. Myers? He doesn't call himself Myers anymore, but it's still R.J. Robert Joseph. Or, as Ennis, he said, our own little Bobby Joe. Well, that's incredible. Except he's not so little anymore. He's a very portly gentleman these days. You say you found him? I found him. What did you say to him, Eddie? Nothing. Well, how could you just say nothing? Tom, you, Billy, and I, we've got nothing to say to Bobby Joe. I just made sure of where we could find him, and I came here to pick up you two guys. Eddie, I, I have a forty-five. What do you guys want to use? Eddie, what are you saying? I'm saying if we leave now, we can fly to where he is in less than three hours and kill him before midnight. <laughs> into the pleasant, well-ordered, comfortable world of Bill Trainer and Tom Wilson. 
there suddenly intrudes a strange, terrifying, and ugly word. It's not a word of this world. It's a word that belongs to another world, a world of pain and horror, a world that they thought was dead and gone. We'll continue in that world when I return shortly with Act Two. When they were 19 years old, Eddie Benson, Bill Trainer, and Tom Wilson suffered and starved and froze in a prison camp in North Korea. Now it's a lifetime later, and to Tom and Bill, Korea is barely a dream. But Eddie Benson is still stuck deep in the nightmare, still determined to carry out a deadly promise they made to each other long ago. I thought you two guys would be glad to see me. Now. Now we can keep our promise. What promise? Tom, you're kidding, aren't you? Bill, you remember the promise the three of us made? Well, do you? Yes. It was more than a promise. Eddie. It was an oath. Look, Eddie. No, you look, Tom. You look back. An amount of dirt in that prison camp. In Korea. You look back and see three guys, we three guys, were kneeling next to that mound of dirt because it's Hennessy's grave. Look back and hear us. Hear us swear never to rest. Never to stop. Never to know a moment's peace until we kill Robert Joseph Myers. Eddie... How could we just kill him? How simple. Blow his brains out. You, you live in another world whether you realize it or not. Now, you just don't go around killing people. But there are people who have to be killed, Tom. You're not in combat. The war's over. Not yet, Eddie. You're home. There's the law. Now, what do you tell the police? The truth. What's the truth? You know the truth as well as I do, Tom. Myers turned rat in Korea. He gave away our escape plan and he got Hennessy killed for it. But can you be sure it was Myers? We know it was Myers. We knew, didn't we? Bill. I guess we did. All right, tell me this. If we were so sure, why didn't we denounce him six months later after we were freed? Why? You know why, Tom. You were the law student. You said don't denounce him. I said? You said. We had no hard evidence. A smart defense lawyer could get him acquitted at a court-martial. That's what you said. All I said was, I wished we had more evidence. You... You said we would have to get Myers by ourselves. That's what you said. We would find him, kill him, and announce it to the whole world. And that's what we swore we would do. Do you remember, Bill? I remember. Tom. All right, Eddie. All right. But that was a long time ago. That doesn't mean it didn't happen. No, but it means it happened in another time, in another place, under different rules. In other words, you're not willing to do it. I can't do it. I'm an attorney, a member of the bar. I simply cannot be an accessory to a felony. Okay. Bill, what's your excuse? I'm not aware that I need an excuse. I just... I spent my life looking for Bobby Joe so that justice could be done. Eddie, we can only have justice through the law. Okay. Tell me, then. Will the law give us justice? <laughs> we have no evidence. Okay. No justice from the law, then. Tell me. In that case, where and to whom can we go for justice? Well... Does your silence mean there isn't going to be any justice? Eddie. Eddie what? Hennessy saved the lives of each of us more times than we can count. If it weren't for him, none of us would be around today. He was betrayed. He was murdered because of... Robert Joseph Myers. Now, is that going to be the end of it? Eddie, there are certain realities... I know what you think, Tom. Bill. 
I want to hear you say something. I wish I knew what to say. You've got nothing to lose, Eddie. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it comes down to, doesn't it? I I'm just Crazy Eddie, the piano player. You guys. Pillars of the community. Rich, respectable, gutless. Well, I'll do it alone. Eddie, there must be another way out of this. Del, tell me about it. Look, I don't want him to go unpunished either. But Eddie... Eddie... Eddie, what's wrong? Eddie? Uh, I don't know. Hey, Eddie. Get, get me a drink of water. Tom, hold on. Or I'm going to pass out. Let him sleep. What's the matter with him, Doctor? <clears throat> well, I'd say this man's been living on his nerves for a long, long time. Well, what can we do for him? Let him sleep. For a week, if he can. And uh, whatever you do, see that nothing excites him. I'm afraid that's going to be difficult. Why? Oh, it's a long story. He needs rest. Needs calm. Call me tomorrow. Yes, yes, Doctor. Bill? Try to get some sleep, Eddie. I feel so tired. I... I'll just rest a while, okay? Sure. I never felt so tired, except... When we were in Korea, I remember. Yeah. Remember, um, Hennessy would keep us awake while we were on guard. Sure. <laughs> you, uh, you were his favorite. Oh, he didn't play favorites. He, he liked you more than the rest of us because you were the best soldier. Eddie, try to get some sleep. I don't care about Tom, but you. Especially you. You have to help me kill Myers. Eddie, you need your sleep. Yeah. I'll sleep a little, and then when I feel stronger, we'll go get him. You have to help me, Bill. After all, if it weren't for you, if it weren't for you... If it weren't for me, what, Eddie? Eddie? Sergeant Hennessy, get me out of here. Hennessy, Hennessy, help me. Please, don't leave me alone. Help me. Help me. Oh, I'm sorry. I was having a nightmare. Oh, darling, you... Mm. Look, you just can't keep torturing yourself. Oh, yes. Liz, what am I going to do? It'll be all right. No, Liz, whatever I do, it won't be all right. It won't. Oh, sure, you just can't. Just can't what? Oh, I better not say anymore. Why did Eddie have to show up now? Oh, darling, what are you going to do? I don't know. But I just can't go and kill Myers. It would be throwing away my whole life. Yours as well. Liz, please help me. I... I can't help you. No one can help you. <laughs> All set. We have the closing tomorrow. You'll own a factory, Bill, my friend. Yeah. Is uh, Eddie better? Yeah, yeah. He um, he's sitting up now, getting an appetite. In a couple of days, the doctor says he can be out of bed. You know what we have to do, don't you? We have to get word to Myers somehow. I don't like this any more than you do, but we have to warn him to keep out of sight for a while. I suppose. Has he told you where Myers is living? No. He won't even tell me what name Myers is using. Why? I don't think he trusts us, Tom. He thinks we betrayed him and Hennessy. Bill. Look, Tom, what's the use? In a sense, we have betrayed Hennessy. I know. We've even betrayed ourselves. It's all... It's all part of what you have to do to live. Now, we must find out where Myers is. Eddie won't tell me. He might tell me... I'll get it out of him somehow. We'll save him yet, in spite of himself. Oh, I'm freezing. It's so cold. So cold. Bill, oh, don't you having a bad 
dream. What? Wake up. Can we go to fire? Why won't they let us go to fire? Bill! A fire. Bill, please. Why can't, why can't they let us have a fire? Bill. Eddie. Yes, Eddie. We gotta break out of here tomorrow night. Hennessy said to take. We won't have a chance. We better not. We'll die if we stay here, Tom. He's right, Tom. You guys know where we have to meet? Yeah, Tom and I. Did you call Myers? No. Why not? Myers isn't going. Why not? Shut up, Bill. You can't tell who's around. Hennessy says Myers can't cut it. But he's one of us. We can't leave him here. Hennessy says we can't take a chance on him. No. No what? Without Hennessy and us around to protect him, he'll die here. I'm gonna talk to Hennessy. I'll convince him. I'll convince him. I'll convince Hennessy that we have got to take Myers. I'll convince him. Bill. Bill, wake huh? up. Tell him you're dreaming again. What? Yeah. Oh, oh. Bill. Oh. I, I, are you all right? Yeah. I'm all right. Oh. Only sometimes I... I don't know which is the dream. This or a career. Oh, hello, Bill. Uh, Tom's here. Oh? Yeah, he's inside talking to Eddie. I have got something to say to Eddie, too. Look, I almost forgot you saw the doctor today. Is there anything? Oh, everything's just fine. Oh, Liz, this should be the happiest part of my life. I, I know, Bill. I'll be right out. Well, how is everybody? I want to thank you for everything, Bill. Oh, it's nothing. I'm leaving tonight. Leaving where to? There's a promise I have to keep. See if you can talk him out of it, Bill. He won't listen to me. He won't tell me anything either. I won't try to talk you out of anything, Eddie. I want to go with you. Bill! What for? To help me or to stop me? I don't know. I just feel that I have to face Myers with you. And then... Well, right now, I don't know. Fellas, if this is the way the conversation is going, I have to leave. I can't be part of what happens. Well, Eddie, where are we going? I'll tell you when we get there. What's the matter? Don't you trust me? Are you going to try to save him? I don't know what I'm going to do. We're in this because you tried to save him the last time, you remember? Yes, I remember. When are we leaving? Tonight. All right, I'll go pack. You don't need much. Just a toothbrush. A razor and a revolver. The decisions have been made. Or have they? Tom stays. Bill goes. But what is it that Bill will do when he faces Myers? Right now, his emotions are those of a 19-year-old. But how long can those emotions sustain a man who is close to 40? We'll know when I return shortly with Act Three. Many of us spend our lives searching for the truth. But what is the truth? When are we closest to the basic essence of our existence? Is it when we have the experience and wisdom of age or the fire and idealism of youth? We keep asking, what is the truth? The answer is, each man must find his own truth. Liz, Liz, Eddie's gone. Yes, I know. You know? Well, I... I... Well, I went to his room to see if he was up to having dinner, and he... He wasn't there. But I was supposed to go with him. I know that, too. How did you know? I didn't tell you. Oh, darling, you didn't have to tell well, me. Well, then how? I have faith in you, Bill. I have faith that... That in the end, you... You will do what's right. Looks as if I'm not going to do anything with Eddie gone. Do you really want to find him? But how? How could I even begin to look? Uh, I... Uh, know where he went. You know? How do you know? Well, well while he was sick, I, I I sent his clothes to the cleaners, and in his pocket, there was an airline return ticket. A ticket to where? Now, look, Bill, I, I won't tell you unless you take me with you. I mean, you can't go in your condition. Bill, but we have to do this together. But it might be dangerous. You're wasting our time, Bill. We should be getting the next plane for Central City. <laughs> Oh, boy, I 
didn't realize how hungry I was. Well, we we missed dinner last night. Now tell me something. How do we find Eddie in a city this size? Oh, where's the waitress? Oh, Miss. Oh, uh, could you bring us the morning paper, please? How's the paper going to help us? Well, the paper would carry ads for the night spots where where he might have worked. Hey, it's right. If he found Myers, it would probably be in a bar or a club. Yes. Oh, th- thank you, Miss. All right, darling, you go through the ad, so just sit and finish this coffee, mm-hmm. then I'll start looking for Eddie. Well, I intend to go with you. Oh, no. No, you don't. It's miserable out. It's snowy. Now, you stay in the hotel. I can find him. Bill. Oh, Bill, we won't... We won't find Eddie. What do you mean? Look at what it says. Hmm? Here in the paper. Let's see. Yeah. Eddie is... is dead. What? Musician found shot to death. Police puzzled by mysterious murder. Body discovered in hotel room. No apparent motive. Eddie dead? How yeah. can he be? Only yesterday. Well, do the police have anything to go on? No. It says here no leads, no clues. Liz, it had to happen last night. Someone was waiting for him. It has to be Myers. Well, look, we better tell the police. But Eddie said that's not the name Myers is using. We don't know who he is. Liz, Bill. Tom. Tom, what are you doing here? I just got in. I checked the hotels and ran you down. Then you know. Yeah, I saw it in the paper. That's why I flew out here. But, Tom. What? Uh, how, how, how could you... Liz, what is it? Uh, oh, nothing. Poor Eddie. You know what this means? We're both in trouble now, you and I. Why? Well, it's obvious Myers knew Eddie was after him, so he killed him. Tom, we have no choice. We have got to find Myers. But while we don't know who he is, he knows who we are. In this big city, who is Myers? He could kill us from ambush and get away with it. Oh, Bill. Of course, there's one thing we could do. Yes? Call it off. How? Take the next plane out of here. That would be our way of telling Myers it's all over. Is that what you want to do? I'm not saying it's what I want to do. I'm listing our options. I think we have to find Myers, Tom. This time we can turn him over to justice. Well, it's funny the way it worked out. Uh, Eddie had to die so that justice could settle accounts with Myers. We have to find him first. All right, we'll try all the music places. Liz, you stay here and stick close to the phones. If either of us gets the lead, we'll be in touch. <laughs> People saw him. Wow. Well, at least he left a pretty tune to remember him by. I, I just can't get it out of my head. Everybody loves it. Well, uh, almost everybody. I know one character who didn't. That's so? Oh, ah, yeah. yeah. You know, it was Eddie's last night on the job. He, he was playing the tune. And... and and this guy who comes in here all the time, this guy wanted to give him ten bucks 
just to quit playing it. You're kidding. No, no, it's a fact. Do you know the guy? Oh, sure. He's a regular. Oh, he hasn't been in lately. Yeah. One thing I gotta say about old R.J. Jackson. He's, he's got a tin ear. R.J. Jackson. Tell me more about him. Hello? Liz, I found him. How? I'll tell you later. His name is R.J. Jackson. He has a place out in the country up in the mountains. I'm going there now. Oh, as soon as Tom checks in with you, tell him to take Route 603 to Mountain Lane. Turn right and go up the hill as far as he can. That's the place. But the road's clear up there. Bill, no, I must tell you. I know what bothers me about Liz, Tom. I want to get started. Look, how did Tom know to come to Central City? We didn't tell him where we were going. He said he read about Eddie in the morning paper. Yes, but Tom was already in Central City early this morning. How did he get Darling, here? Darling, you're talking about Tom. Now, I'm sure he... Look, honey, I have got to be on my way. Tom, glad you made it. Yeah. I guess this is as far as the car can take us. It's that house on the top of the hill. Yeah. I think we should have sent the police. How? Once again, we don't have the evidence. Now, what are we going up there for? To kill him ourselves? No. I think we can get a confession out of him. Oh, sure. Now, look, he's human. He's got a guilty conscience. He'll break down. He has to. Now, come on. Looks like Korea, doesn't it? Yeah. Miles and miles of nothing. You can just sink into the snow. It can just be the end of everything. That's far enough. What? Stay where you are. Look in the doorway. It's Myers. He's got a rifle. You're trespassing. Now get out of here, or I'll shoot. You wouldn't shoot us, Myers. My name isn't Myers. Now get out of here. We have to talk with you, R.J. We're coming up. I warned you. Come on, R.J. You can't get away with Look it. Look out! Stay low, Tom. There's a line of trees leading up to the house. We'll work our way in. Ew, this guy can kill both of us. I don't think he wants to. Are you crazy? This is the man who just killed Eddie last night. Right now, he's scared. Come on. Head for those trees. Keep away! Keep away! Go we'll try for that stone fence. Tom, what? put your gun away. I'm not going to let him pick me off. He'll show himself in the doorway when he wants to shoot again. Don't. He's only trying to scare us off. I see him. Don't, Tom. Don't. I got him. I got him. Look. He's on the ground. Hurry up. Come on. R.J., don't kill me. Don't shoot again. Get me a doctor. You'll get a doctor. But first, we'll get a confession. Now, you sold us out on the prison camp. Confess. No. No, I didn't tell. Let him alone. He'll confess later. Let's bring him inside. No, he'll confess now. And when Eddie Benson found you, you shot him. No, I didn't. And who did? I'm hurt bad. Get me to a doctor. Bill, you were always a good guy. Help me. R.J., it was a long time ago. The world's forgotten. I don't even think you could be brought to trial for it. It's just among the three of us. Now, I want you to confess. I didn't do it. Honest. I didn't do it. You did because you didn't show up. You stayed behind. You told the guard. No. What did they give you? Did you have to kill Eddie, too? I didn't kill anybody. Yes, you did. We can get the waitress to testify. <coughs> She'll tell how you saw Eddie in the lounge, how you passed out. Well, sure, I was scared. Because you guys always thought it was me. But it could have been anybody. You, Tom. What? Or you, Bill. Or even Eddie himself. Let's drag him down to my car and bring him in. Tom. Now, please. Haven't I suffered enough? No, it's not enough. Tom, how did you know about the waitress? Huh? How did you know about the waitress? What? You, you told me. No, I didn't tell you anything about the waitress. 
I just left a message for you to meet me here. Well, I... I... Well, you must have said something about it to Liz. But I didn't. Well, then, how would I know? How? Because Eddie told you. Eddie? Why would Eddie you tell me? You said you could get it out of him. Did you tell him that I would never help him, but that you would? Is that how you got him to trust you? Oh, come on. Why would I want to kill Eddie? Because of that talk we had in my house. Maybe unconsciously, both Eddie and I started to think... Why were we always convinced that R.J. was the informer? Because... Because you were the first one to accuse him. And who said not to denounce him to the army? You did, Tom. And who said let's hunt him down ourselves? You did. Why? Because you knew it would be impossible. You knew we would settle down in a civilian life and forget it. Bill, you've got it wrong. But you didn't figure on Eddie. You didn't figure one of us would spend his whole Bill, life... Bill, you know me. Everywhere you turn, it's you, Tom. You with all the shrewd answers. Why did you have to kill Eddie? Because... Because he was starting to talk just like you are. And then... And then he figured it out. And he wanted to kill me. So... So I had to kill him. It was self-defense. Tom. I had to kill him. It was like it used to be. Back in combat. Kill or be killed. You were the informer. No, no. I informed, but I wasn't the informer. I... I just didn't do what Hennessy ordered. I didn't cover my tracks. That's why they found us. What did they pay you? Nothing. I, I, I wanted us to get caught. You wanted it. Why? Well, Hennessy was wrong. The only time in his life he was wrong. We could never have made it, Bill. All of us would have died in the snow. I was trying to save our lives. Uh, I tried to explain it to Hennessy. I tried, but he wouldn't listen. He would only say in that, that way of his, Trust me, kid. It'll be okay. And I... I keep trying to explain to him. Believe me, I try... Every night, every night for the last 20 years, I try to make him see it, but I can't find him. He's out there in the snow, and I can't find him. All right, Tom, we better go back to town. No, no, wait here. I'll find him. He, he can't have gone far. I'll find him. I'll explain why I did this. He'll forgive me. Stop him, Bill. Stop him. He'll get lost out there. He'll freeze to death. I can't leave you, RJ. We have to get you to a doctor. We'll come back for Tom. Later. They found Tom Wilson later. Much later. About the time of the spring thaw. The snow, the ice, had preserved the final expression on his face. It was one of peace and calm. As if he had actually found Hennessy, and Hennessy had forgiven him. Well, Hennessy would. He was that kind of man. I'll be back shortly. dreams. The man does. It's what we call the generation gap. And this is not the distance between parents and children. It is the unbridgeable abyss between what a man is today and what he wanted to be yesterday. But that's because you can only be young once. Something you can do more than once is listen you can listen again and again to our mystery theater tales. Our cast included Tony Roberts, Mandel Kramer, George Petrie, Bryna Rayburn, and Lon Clark. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams...
It's 11 o'clock at KOIN in Portland.